This is Pat Solver with Health Innovation Media, broadcasting from Hims 14 in Orlando. And I have with me this morning a very interesting guest, uh, Devin Jopp. Dr. Devin Jopp, right? An e, a PhD, no, an EDD. That's correct. And he is the president. Correct. Are you also CEO? Do you have a bunch of titles? I, I guess I do both jobs, president and CEO. Okay, of yeah. uh, Weedy and uh, W E D I. That's so, correct. okay, interesting. What is Weedy? Well, we were actually founded in 1993 by Secretary uh, Dr. Lewis Sullivan, Secretary of HHS. And it's actually a crazy idea. Let's bring industry together and figure out how to use health IT to actually improve uh, processing in both the administrative and clinical sides of health. Oh, you mean collaborate? You mean that collaborate that work? Collaboration. In fact, it was one of the earliest collaborations. So our original report in 93 formed the basis for the HIPAA legislation. Oh, that's interesting. So, that's so HIPAA's got a long history. We could have a, another whole talk about that, but I <laughs> really want to focus on a, a little bit about what Weedy does and on these reports because they're quite influential. Thank so you. Um, tell us about Weedy and tell us about this latest report. You bet. Well, you know, over the years we kind of been working on implementation on the first report and we said, well, it's time, It's twenty. it's been 20 years, it's time to update it. Uh, that was a pretty good long range plan that lasted oh, the, you, So this is report number two. Number two. Oh, okay. And so last year, we actually went ahead and completed the new report uh, with a, a panel of luminaries. About 36 people were involved uh, and about another 200 folks from across the industry. And in it, we actually identified four new areas of focus, one of them being innovative encounters, how we use your things like your smartphone to actually be able to deliver on new care. So second, looked at new payment models, fee for value. And what does that mean in terms of what's all the infrastructure going to be required to do that? Uh, we did focus on data harmonization standards. So how do you get the data out of the administrative side and the clinical data to make to actually be able to do these kinds of things we're talking about with new payment models? And finally, and I think most importantly, was patient engagement. Um, because we actually found that in 93, we were talking about connecting all the players. But in 2013, it's actually about the patients actually who needs to be connected to all these players and that they can be the intermediary. And I think the most important part of the healthcare system, which, which I think we often forget. Yeah, it's very interesting. I trained in internal medicine a lot of years ago, and I can tell you that the the patient was the guy in the bed, not 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 at the center of the care, right? I mean, nobody when I was in training was talking about patients having access to their data. Yes. We felt like we owned the data. Now it's really a revolution. So I understand that you guys, uh, as a part of that last um, part of your report, the patient engagement, have uh, formed a new council. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, we're really excited about this. Uh, uh, Weedy, in partnership with our, our foundation, the Sullivan Institute for Healthcare Innovation, which is being led by Dr. the Honorable Lewis W. Sullivan, um, is actually kicked off a patient experience at council. It's our first foray actually into actually implementing the report. So you called it patient experience, not patient engagement. So how'd you move from really what's been the buzzword in healthcare for the last couple of years to what I think is really a, a, a better description of what we want to attain? Yeah, well, I, I think, you know, this whole conversation about patient engagement, well, you know, we need to get patients more engaged. Well, it is about their experience through the system. So we're actually looking at a couple different avenues in terms of taking action, and one of them is let's map what the patient needs to see and experience through the various transactions in healthcare. So me as a new patient checking in, me as a new patient care coordinating, um, my family caregiver doing these things on my behalf, uh, me managing my financial payments through this process. So we're sort of starting to do things that the hospitality industry has been doing for a decade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my running joke is, you know, everything's just recycled about 10 years ago. But, but in healthcare, I think it's critical because and last year, for the first time, we actually started having consumers, and more than one consumer. Oh, yeah. So we, we talked earlier. I'm used to going to these meetings uh, about 10 years ago when I was doing a lot of this health policy stuff, and, and people would say, and we have a consumer. <laughs> and we have a consumer. It was always Families USA. Yes. Yes. And I think we, we you know, our realization here is that we have to move past that, and consumers have to be embedded into these processes and, and more than just a single voice. And so we actually, our, our group is going to be made up of what I hope to be, it will be a core of 15 individuals which are all consumers uh, and then we'll expand out from there in terms of really trying to bring them into the daily conversations and make sure that that voice isn't lost. So it's my understanding that you have a couple of luminaries who are co-chairing this panel. Can you tell us a little bit about them? Yes, you, you know, I always surround myself with greater people than I, and uh, this is no case, uh, this is the same case. And uh, Kim Martin, 
which uh, uh, is fabulous. Uh, she's a three-time cancer survivor herself, and it's just an incredible, uh, uh, passionate energy that she's bringing to this. Uh, and Gail Emp, uh, who is also, um, she is a, a family caregiver, uh, taking care of her, her uh, elderly mother, and she also has a strong bench strength in actually understanding consumer processes and actually how to get consumers engaged in their care. So. so do you know what their thinking is, or are you in involved in their thinking around how you're actually going to recruit these 15 people? Who who are they going to be? What kind of um, backgrounds or healthcare experience are you hoping to put around the table? Well, we're hoping to really bring a myriad of different folks, right? You know, so we've invited, uh, for example, the Society of Participatory Medicine to come in, and those folks I think represent really smart consumers. You know, that are going to be the e-patients. E-patients, right? But then we're going to go down into the mid and the other tiers, the lower tier of knowledge about the system. Because what we don't want is really engaged consumers that, that already know how they work the system. We want to actually have a blend. So our, we're going to actually be stratifying this, working with other organizations, even outside of healthcare, to identify patients uh, and working with some of our member companies to reach out to their members. So payers, existing payers and hospitals. And so um, when is all this work going to get started? Well, I have my two folks over here ready to get started. Uh, we actually are recruiting right now our first core. We have about six uh, consumers already that have committed. And so I expect to actually fill this out and actually really begin this work in March. And are you interested in people self-identifying? And if so, would you like to tell our audience if, if, if they think they would add value to this um, council, uh, how do they go about contacting you? You bet. Uh, best way is actually to uh, express your interest is to send an email to S. Holvey, it's H-O-L-V-E-Y, at weedy.org. And we want it to hear from everybody. So you know, send me your, your uh, interest, and we would love to uh, get you connected. Well, fantastic. So I'm really glad to have had a chance to spend time with you, and I'm looking forward to seeing what comes out of the Patient Experience Council. Great work. Thank Thanks, Devin. So much. Appreciate it. Okay. Take care.